A young man, Kang Hyun, is seen preparing a meal and later eating at a campsite. He is soon surrounded by weird-looking friends who want to eat with him. A few days ago, Kang Hyun arrived at his grandfather's abandoned store with a friend, Yoon Siop Hyun. Yoon Siop asks him if he, the most famous chef in Korea, is really going to open a restaurant in his grandfather's store. Hyun ignores his question and steps out of the car wearing sunglasses and a nose mask. He asks Yoon Siop if he is sure there is no one around, reminding him of how they got caught by the paparazzi the last time they let their guard down. But Yoon Siop says no one will follow him that far and Hyun seems calmer. As he enters the store, Hyun thinks about himself. He graduated from CIA, one of the three best cooking schools, won the Paris International Cooking Competition, and somehow got recognized, which resulted in him getting love calls from different TV shows. He reasons that some people might think he has a bright future ahead of him as he is a young, competent chef, but he had to turn down disturbing fans, leading to his jealous co-workers complaining about him. There were many comments on social media about how Hyun is not really good at cooking and that his skills are exaggerated, which made him feel down and tired of the attention. Yoon Siop advises him to think through about opening the restaurant there saying he is sure Hyun will not earn much there. Hyun reminds him he is there to rest, they go back and forth in the way of friends, and Hyun later cooks a meal for them. As they sit to eat, Hyun has a flashback to when a customer raged at him for not cooking to his taste. His friend understands his predicament and tries to cheer him up by saying the sauce tastes okay. This brings Hyun to another issue he has, he cannot taste food. A doctor told him he lost his sense of taste due to stress, and the cause is psychological so he cannot promise anything through surgery. He told Hyun to take care of his stress first, and try getting a hobby. Yoon Siop continues to try to persuade him to drop the notion of opening a restaurant. He says he is worried about the number of customers, and he does not think there is much to be done in the area. Hyun says there are only mountains and field there, and that is perfect as he can go camping in the mountains and fields. In a taxi on his way to camping, Hyun thinks about the things he packed trying to remember if he packed all his necessities. The driver asks him if he is going to the sea, and he says he is going camping up in the mountains. The driver says he is wearing the wrong outfit, and he asks if Hyun brought a tube with him. Hyun asks if he needs a tube, and the driver says he thinks Hyun needs to think. Hyun is surprised at the man's cajole, and he tells the man to go to Yongpyong village. The man informs him that they do not sell tubes there, but Hyun says he just have a place he needs to stop by. At Yongpyong village, Hyun stops by a house, reasoning that it is his first time going there after his grandfather's death and he decides to clean the house before he leaves. As he is staring at the house, he notices that the storage door is open, and he sneaks to take a look thinking that a thief might be there. He holds his stainless camping bag reasoning that he will use it on the thief, but a cat meow, almost scaring the life out of Hyun, he feels relieved and enters the room, looking for the switch. But as he walks into the room, he feels weird reasoning that the room does not look that big from the outside. As Hyun continues to walk into the room, he feels a great wind and realizes that he is standing at a cliff edge. But instead of water, the beneath is filled with shining lights of several colors. He suddenly falls off the cliff and lands on a grassy area. As he is wondering where he is, a squirrel licks his hand. He stares frightened at the squirrel reasoning that its ears are too big. But the squirrel, with no wings, suddenly flies off using its ears. He hears a sound and turns to see a rabbit poking its head from the grass. He feels relieved until the rabbit stands and turns out to be huge, built, and in human form, the rabbit walks past him, paying him no attention, before it hops off. This makes Hyun really scared, and he runs around reasoning that he has to find the exit and get out as the place is too dangerous. At night, Hyun still has no luck finding the exit, and he is already tired. He ponders that he is doomed as there are no people or phone reception in the area, and the doctor tells him to go camping, not to get lost. He feels hungry and manages to make a fire, but most of his food materials are in the camping bag that he dropped in the storage room. He decides to settle for some meat, and he begrudgingly cooks it. After cooking, he eats his first bite reasoning that he would normally have to spit it out as soon as he put it in his mouth, but since it is tasteless, he can eat it. He angrily throws the food away and hugs himself with tears in his eyes. Suddenly he looks up and sees that there are a lot of wolves approaching him. He picks up a pocket knife reasoning that there is nothing he can do with such a knife. One of the wolves lunge at him, and he closes his eyes in fear. 
but the wolf does not attack him, and when he opens his eyes back, he sees that all the wolves are gone. He wonders where they are, and notices that a little white dog has eaten the food he threw away. He pets the dog and asks where it came from. As the dog moves closer to him, Hyun feels self-conscious and tells the dog to leave if it is done eating as he does not like dogs. As he pets the dog, he says he does not understand why people say dogs are cute. He stares at the dog wondering why it really seems cute, and he realizes that it is a little wolf. Hyun quickly checks around wondering where the mother of the wolf is. He asks if the wolves he saw earlier are its family, and he becomes scared that its mother might misunderstand and think he kidnapped the little wolf. Hyun gives up reasoning that if it is a dog or a wolf, he might get eaten or starve to death, but the sure thing is he will die anyway. The little wolf tries to drag Hyun, and he asks if the wolf wants to eat him. He then warns it that human smells fishy. The wolf calls his attention to a hole, and Hyun realizes that it is the one he fell through. He wonders if he can go back through there, but he decides to be calm as it is heading further down, so it might be a portal to hell. As he bends to take a look first, the wolf runs to him and pushes him down the hole. Hyun falls and finds himself back in his grandfather's storage room. Hyun is almost beside himself with relief that he is able to return. He remembers the wolf and says he did not get to thank him. He smiles and reasons that he will not be seeing the wolf again, but he will not forget the debt. Unknown to Hyun, the wolf also fell through the hole, and it is now sitting beside him. Hyun takes the wolf inside and bathes it. He then writes different names on a board and asks the wolf to pick one. He later sleeps with the wolf beside him. The next morning, Hyun wakes up feeling relaxed. He reasons that he had not slept that well in a long time. He later feels a dog plate with dog food and sets it before the wolf saying wolves are a type of dog, so the food should be fine. The wolf refuses to eat the food, and Hyun brings out cat food and rabbit food, but the wolf refuses to eat. Hyun feels frustrated and wonders if he should starve the wolf. He decides to take care of his food issue in the process of taking care of the wolf. Hyun prepares food for himself and sits to eat. He reasons that he cannot taste the food, but he cooked really hard, and there might be some food that he can taste. The wolf, whom Hyun has named Rice Cake, jumps on the table and starts eating Hyun's food. Hyun notices that Rice Cake is cleverly avoiding convenience store food. Even the steak he brought is avoided. Hyun places two plates of steak in front of Rice Cake. One is the one he cooked himself and the other is the one he bought from the convenience store. He reasons that both are made through the same method, but the sauce is different, as one is the commercial sauce, and the other is recipe sauce, his special sauce that was applauded in an international cooking competition. Rice Cake sniffs the steak with commercial sauce first, and Hyun reasons that the sauce is also delicious, but if Rice Cake chooses his special sauce, then he has the talent to be an Epicurean. Rice Cake eats the commercial steak before going to sniff Hyun's steak, as he hurriedly eats Hyun's steak with relish. Hyun feels good and praises Rice Cake that he knew he was not a normal wolf. Hyun is painting his grandfather's store in preparation for opening the restaurant, but he is not doing a good job. He asks himself if there is something wrong with the color or the paint, and a man arrives and says that is not a surprise since he is painting outside with paint meant to be used inside. Hyun turns to look at the stranger, who is actually an old man. He asks him who he is, and the man says he is the head of the village, and the man Hyun should greet when he first moves. He says Hyun has cappy painting skills and asks if it is his first time painting. The man gets distracted as he sees rice cake, and he tries to pet him. He tells Hyun to stop painting, and he will get someone to do it. Hyun is surprised and says he can call someone but the man insists that there are people who can do it in the village, and he complains that Hyun does not know the value of money. Still trying to pet rice cake, the man tells Hyun not to put anything on his schedule for the weekend, and that he will get him someone to paint. This makes Hyun feel uncomfortable, but he does not have a choice. True to his word, the village head arrives with a man to paint for Hyun. He says the man is the son of the Jung family, and he is really good and the painter introduces himself to Hyun as young Minho. As Hyun introduces himself to Minho, he is surprised that they really came. He watches as they deliberate on how to paint the wall, and wonders why they are working so hard when it is not even their house. The village head asks Hyun what kind of restaurant he plans to open. 
He replies that he plans on opening an Italian restaurant, and Minho asks him if he will sell pork cutlets. As they sit inside the store, Minho explains that his wife likes pork cutlets, but the restaurant they always go to is closed, and since she is pregnant, they can't go far. He says he tried to make it himself, but the taste was bad. Sensing Hyun's hesitation, Minho reassures him that it is okay if he so not sell it as he was just asking in case he does. Hyun reasons that pork cutlets are easy to make, but he is not sure about giving customers food that he do not know the taste of. He wonders if he should not open the restaurant. He remembers rice cake and tells Minho that he can make pork cutlets, and he will help him relive the past. Hyun studies the recipe he wants to use in preparing the pork cutlets, he remembers that Minho said the sauce was more brown than red and it tasted sweet because of the tomatoes. He reasons that using tomatoes will make it bitter, and he later concludes that they actually used ketchup. After a long process of preparing the meal, Hyun calls rice cake and serves him the pork cutlets. He notices that rice cake is wagging his tail slower than before, and he wonders if it is because the sweetness is too strong. He serves him another batch, but still feels that rice cake wagging is weak. As Hyun serves him another batch, he reasons that after losing his sense of taste, cooking has never felt enjoyable as he could not taste his own dish. But it is enjoyable now that he has a way of telling how it tastes. Minho arrives with his wife at Hyun's restaurant. As they sit at a table, he asks her if her morning sickness has gotten better. She tells him it is okay as she hears a new restaurant has opened so she is excited to eat there. Hyun serves them the pork cutlets which look amazing. Minho's wife commends the meal saying it smells so good as she digs in to have her first taste. Hyun and Minho watch her in and ask how it is. She says the countryside store was good, but Hyun's own is better. She continues to say the sauce tastes similar, but the meat is crispier and juicier and she has never had pork cutlets like that before. As Hyun watches them, Minho's wife asks him if he remembers their first date. She says they had pork cutlets that day too, and he was side-eyeing her the whole time instead of eating. Making Minho feel uncomfortable, she says his hands were shaking so much that it was making him worried and she started eating pork cutlets more often after that. She says she did not really like it before, but she came to like eating it because she relished the memory with him. Hyun smiles and turns to rice cake who is still asleep from eating too many pork cutlets. Hyun sits alone in his restaurant working on his menu. He reasons that serving a customer before the grand opening made him realize that he does not have to do Italian, but a menu revolving around what the customers want. He thinks that restaurants like that exist, but they are all reservation only and quite expensive. He is determined to figure it out, and he looks at rice cake who is lying on the ground looking depressed. Hyun reasons that he has to do something about him. He wonders if rice cake misses the forest he came from, and he decides that he should return rice cake to the other world. He reasons that the house will get emptier, but he tells rice cake that he will take him back to his home. He suddenly remembers that he will also have to go back there, and he decides not to go again. Rice cake looks at him with soft and loving eyes, but Hyun says he will not fall for that as he does not want to go back there. Turns out despite all his refusal, Hyun later goes to the other world with rice cake. He feels uncomfortable and decides to be quick. As he walks around with rice cake, he wonders what place it is and if it is a different dimension like in the comics. He gets to a lake and he reasons that he would also get homesick if his home was a place like that. As rice cake plays in the water, Hyun brings out a pack and says he has a gift for him as he had helped him with the pork cutlets, so he will feed him some expensive meat. He brings out a grill and prepares the meat with it. Rice cake eats the meat with a flourish, and Hyun sits watching him. After a while, Hyun feels something is missing, and he brings out a can of beer saying he cannot leave out alcohol when the view and meat is amazing. As he drinks the beer, he reasons that he cannot taste anything, but he has heard one does not drink alcohol for the taste. As he continues to drink, a man suddenly places a sword to his throat and says Hyun does not look like he is from a nearby village, and he has never seen the artifacts with him before. He asks Hyun who he is, wondering if he is a wizard or a scout, but Hyun is too scared by the sword at his throat to reply to him. Hyun keeps quiet despite the man's questions, wondering who would have thought that he would have to experience a sword being held to his throat. He says he is a chef and he is not a suspicious person at all. 
The man asks him what he is doing in the area, and he replies that he was just admiring the view. His reply angers the man who asks why he is admiring the view in a forest where demonic beasts appear. He presses the sword to Hyun's neck and says if he does not tell him what he came there to do, he will kill him. The man then notices rice cake and he is shocked. Hyun, trying to persuade the man not to kill him, says he will give him as much money as he wants. But the man apologizes saying the lace is not where ordinary people can enter so he was being overly sensitive. He then introduces himself as Randolph, a knight from the territory nearby. Hyun introduces himself to Randolph wondering why he suddenly changes his attitude. Randolph says the fact that Hyun is accompanied by a white wolf that only appears in folktales means he is not a bad person. He notices Hyun's confused look and realizes that he does not know about that. Randolph explains that the white wolves are a race that has inherited the blood of the old god. They are said to be descendants of the wolf god, and it is said that the primordial wolf god possesses eyes that can distinguish between good and evil and great wisdom. Randolph says the white wolf race is said to have inherited some of these abilities, and such a white wolf is accompanying Hyun. Hyun feels that explains all of Rice Cake's actions. Randolph asks if he is having a meal while looking at the lake. He says the food he eats in a place like that is bound to feel more special, and he asks what kind of meat Hyun is eating. Hyun replies that it is beef, and he asks if he would like to have some. Randolph tries to refuse, but he finds it hard to resist the meat. He agrees to have just a bite, but he is amazed at the taste of the meat. He reasons that there is no way he can find meat of that quality easily. He sees the can of beer with Hyun and asks him what it is. Hyun tells him it is alcohol, and he asks if it comes from the area he lives in. Randolph comments that the cup looks interesting and asks if the taste will be as unique. Hyun asks if he would like to try some, and he drags it from Hyun saying there is no need to refuse it since he placed it into his hands. Hyun brings out another can and says Randolph should have the new one as he has already been drinking the other one. Randolph happily accepts the can of beer, and as he drinks it, he says he is surprised that beer can taste that clean. Hyun reasons that Randolph's attitude is completely different from when he first put a blade to his neck and he now just looks like a foreigner who lives in the neighborhood. Randolph says that he cannot let Hyun leave empty-handed as he had treated him to a great meal. He says if Hyun ever comes to his town, he should find him. He says when he arrives, he should say he is looking for the robentus knight Captain Randolph. Hyun wonders in confusion if Randolph is like a squadron leader. Meanwhile, Randolph reasons that Hyun is not surprised after hearing of his position, and he is definitely not an ordinary person. Randolph says he wants to tell Hyun to be careful because he never knows what might appear, but since he has the white wolf with him, he will be fine. As Randolph leaves, Hyun tries to stop him reasoning that Randolph should not drink beer while on patrol. He concludes that since it is a different world, they must follow a different standard. He serves rice cake the last meal which he eats happily. Hyun reasons that it is thanks to rice cake that things have been lively for a while and it feels sad that he has to leave him behind. As Hyun packs his stuff, he tells Rice Cake, who is still eating the meat, that he enjoyed their short time together, and it was thanks to him that he was able to make good pork cutlets. He says he does not know if they will meet again, but Rice Cake should take care of himself till then. Rice Cake ignores Hyun as he continues to enjoy the meal. Hyun feels annoyed as he reasons that it is no wonder why people say it is useless to raise children. He remembers that they have not met for long, but he still feels rice cake should be a little more attached to him. He turns back to look at rice cake and realizes that he is now hanging onto his bag. Hyun is surprised and he asks why he is suddenly doing that. Rice cake licks his hand and Hyun says they are at his hometown that he wants to come back to, but he is still trying to follow him back. He jumps on him and Hyun asks if rice cake prefers to be with him. As Rice Cake looks at him with loving eyes, Hyun says he had no choice but to bring him along with him before, but since he does not listen, they will be going back together. As they return to Hyun's world, Hyun wonders if that means that he has to keep going back to the other world, and he later concludes that he can still take Rice Cake out and have some fun like they just did. As he is about to enter his restaurant, he notices a lot of people sitting outside and having fun. He wonders what is going on and why they have to gather in front of his house. 
The village head notices him and approaches him. Haiyan asks what they are all doing there, and he replies that they are having a feast. Haiyan says he did not hear about it, reasoning that even if he had heard about it, he would not have come anyway. A man arrives and tells the village head that the banner has arrived. Haiyan turns to leave saying as an uninvited guest, he will take his leave first. But the village head says he can join them as the party is to welcome him. They spread the banner saying, Congratulations on joining the village souls Li Kang Haiyan Haiyan stares looking dumbfounded. Grandma Park sits at the table, waiting for her meal. She thinks about how Haiyan knew she was coming, and that the food was already ready however, she feels a bit reluctant, thinking he will probably serve her pasta again. She admits to herself that she doesn't really like its flavor, and she questions her choice to visit the restaurant. However, the smell of the food drifts through the air, catching her attention. Hein brings out the pasta, saying it is from his restaurant's special menu, which he calls Daily Pasta. She looks at the plate, wondering if Dailies are also in the States. As she gets ready to try the pasta, she thinks it might taste better this time, and she enjoys the spring greens Hein added to the dish. Grandma Park thinks back to a time when her husband was still alive. He once sat beneath a tree, and said that spring was in full bloom. He felt that more flowers had blossomed this year compared to last year. He gave her some flowers, in a playful way, asked if she was free to share a cup of tea together. However she then questioned why he was being so nice. Grandma Park looks at the flowers visible through Hein's restaurant windows, and realizes that it is spring again. She keeps eating the pasta and comments that it wasn't on the menu before. Hein admits that it wasn't and she wonders if he made it just for her. She is curious why he would go out of his way for her. He explains that he wanted to make a dish, she would like while also trying something new to improve his cooking skills. Hein understands that he can't rely only on rice cake to make his customers happy, which is why he wants to impress his first guest without needing rice cake its help. After finishing her meal, Grandma Park asks how much she owes him. Hyun is surprised that she ate everything and says that she doesn't need to pay. She replies, questioning what type of restaurant owner would let his guests eat for free. She insists that, because she liked her meal so much, she has to pay him for it. However, this makes you wonder if she really understands how things work. Although she enjoyed her meal, it seems a bit unfair to think she must compensate him. But that's just her opinion, right? She tells him not to underestimate the value of the food he makes, and she suggests that he add the dish to his menu, promising to come back. Hein smiles happily as she leaves. In the other world, he finds peace, he is happy to have pleased his first guest, and has finally opened his restaurant. All that's left is to take some time to heal. However, because rice cake causes a fuss if he doesn't visit the other realm, he decides to go there often for a break. While Hyan enjoys his free time, Randolph suddenly shoots an arrow at a bird, but he misses and the bird almost crashes into Hyan. Randolph says hello to Hyan, who is lying on the ground after falling from the mishap. Later, as they sit down, Hyan asks if Randolph is on duty. He answers that he's off and has come to hunt a little. Randolph then offers to treat Hyan to a meal, suggesting they go hunting together. Although Hyan first thinks he doesn't want to join, he eventually finds himself holding a bow and arrows. Randolph guides him and rice cake to a place known for its jumping birds. As he points out the birds, Hyan thinks they look like cotton candy and feels a twinge of regret about hurting such cute creatures. Randolph then explains that, although their feathers seem soft, the birds are actually a short, haired type. While the birds fight with each other, Hyan realizes that the cotton candy look is, in truth, compressed muscle. This realization fills him with fear and he wonders how he will catch the birds. However, Randolph is already chasing them and tells Hein to help him from behind. Hein focuses his mind and tries to shoot an arrow with calm precision, he aims for the bird. However, he barely misses and almost hits Rice Cake, who instantly feels betrayed. Later, Randolph cooks the bird's meat over a fire and asks Hyan if he can eat, as his hands shake uncontrollably. Hyan says he can handle it, but he worries about the meat's smell, thinking it would be rude to cover his nose. Randolph then gives him a piece of meat, and when Hein takes a bite, he realizes that even someone who can't taste can tell when food is bad. Randolph notices Hein's hesitation to eat the meat, trying to impress him, he brags about showing off his skills with the leftover beef. Although Hein hesitates at first, he suddenly feels unsure, remembering that he can't taste food, which makes him doubt his cooking skills. However he decides to change his mindset by showing off his abilities, telling Randolph to let him make something tasty with the meat. As Hein takes care of the meat, he thinks about how he tried to get rid of the nasty smell by pulling out as much blood as he could from the creek, however, the task usually takes half a day, so it was not enough, he gets rid of the bad smell with some beer and Randolph tries to step in. Yet, Hyan warns him to build a support for the pot before he gets more annoyed. Although Randolph puts together the structure, Hyan fills the pot with beer and water, adds other ingredients and simmers the meat for an hour. Rice Cake, who had run away to avoid Randolph's meat, comes back, attracted by the delicious smell of Hyan's dish. When Hyan lifts the lid off the pot, the lovely scent drifts toward Randolph and Rice Cake, who are ready to eat. However, Hyan says that he needs to roast it one last time. 
He explains that he would have liked to put it in an oven, but one of the best parts of camping is roasting the meat over an open fire, because this brings everyone together. Hyen carefully cuts the meat into small pieces and serves it to Randolph, who is still unsure if the tasty smell really comes from the jumping bird meat. He thinks that even the best chefs in the area have given up on trying to make this meat into something good. When he takes his first bite, he is surprised by the flavor however, he keeps eating, telling himself that the outside of the meat is as crispy as a cookie. But at the same time, the meat's chewiness remains, while the insides are soft and juicy. He wonders if it is really the same jumping bird meat he has always eaten, feeling like something is missing from the meal, because it doesn't taste quite right. There must be a way to create a perfect balance with the dish. Suddenly, he remembers the beer and tells Hyen to get him a can. As he drinks the beer and enjoys the meat, he praises Hyen, saying it's the best side dish for beer, and he doesn't think he will ever get tired of it. Hyen says that it is not totally unpleasant, however, he could have gotten rid of the smell completely. There is a reason for the long time it takes to get rid of the blood. He also mentions that they might have let it sit for a little longer. This makes him think about how important it is to bring some laurel leaves just in case. Although Randolph might be surprised by Heinz's unhappiness, even after making such an impressive meal, he thinks that Heinz's cooking skills could be better than those of the royal chefs in the capital. He is left wondering who Hein really is, and what he can do. As they keep eating the meat, Randolph shares his wish to treat Hein to a meal however, he accidentally ends up being treated by Hein again. Because of this, he thinks he can never enjoy a regular jumping bird meal after having such a wonderful feast. Randolph asks if he can copy Hein's cooking techniques, but Hein replies without much interest claiming that his methods are nothing special. Although this is true, Randolph argues that, because he knows several chefs, he really understands the true value of Hein's cooking skills. He insists that Hein's dishes are amazing, pushing him to stop downplaying his own talents. Hein responds that he is getting similar compliments often and he thanks Randolph. Then, Randolph says he wants to repay Hein with something great, he will teach him swordsmanship. Although Hein looks at him in disbelief, Randolph goes on saying that he might be living in the countryside right now. However, he used to have a good reputation in the capital. His swordsmanship, he claims, should be seen as a fair trade for the meal. Hein, who calls himself a chef, suggests that Randolph should just teach those a people who want his instruction instead of teaching him. However, this might be difficult for Randolph, because he has his own style. Although teaching others can be rewarding, it could also take a lot of time and effort. But, in the end, helping others learn might be worth it. Randolph shows he doesn't like the whole group, this means that whenever their paths cross again, he plans to teach Hein about swordsmanship. In return Hein can make a side dish and some beer for Randolph. He thinks Randolph might feel embarrassed about being treated unfairly over and over however, he doesn't mind sharing both his knowledge and beer with him. Although this is true, Randolph might still feel a bit uncomfortable. Hein eventually decides to see the situation as a workout because it could help strengthen his arms, which is important for using heavy wokes properly. The week after opening the restaurant, Hein thinks about the large number of villagers who have visited during that time. He wonders to himself that he first thought there would be no customers, and he definitely wasn't expecting any. Looking at Rice Cake, who is just watching TV, he sits down with him. Only to find out Rice Cake is really into a show about Yu and Azi, a group of female idol stars. Hein remembers their name from somewhere, but he can't quite remember exactly where he heard it before. In the meantime, Yun Siap is with the Yunizi group and he asks about the progress of their work. They all express dissatisfaction about the area and other challenges, which makes Yunsiap feel quite exhausted. He concludes that, because there is nothing planned after the shoots for their show, he should visit Hyun, who is nearby. After he contacts Hyun to see if he can come over for a meal, the girls watch him with curiosity, wondering who he is talking to. Once he ends the call, he leaves, leaving the girls under his assistant's supervision. He tells them to be nice to his assistant, and they all smile, asking when they have ever been anything but nice and obedient. Yunsap knows that the girls can be troublesome, however, he decides to leave without saying more. As he goes out, his assistant tells the girls they should head home, but they insist he follow Yunsiap. He refuses their request and one girl smiles at him, saying that asking for forgiveness is often easier than seeking permission. Meanwhile Hyun is cleaning up the restaurant and grumbling that Yunsiap should have given him a heads up before planning his visit, because he might have been busy. He decides to make a meal for himself, however, just then, Yunsiap walks in, scolding his assistant, who looks pretty flustered about how the only cars on the road are theirs. Because a notices that they are following him, Hyun watches as the assistant apologizes to Yunsiap and the girls induce themselves as UNIZ, although they seem a bit nervous. As the girls' pet, rice cake Hyun observes. He reasons that his modest restaurant in the most remote village has attracted the attention of idols. Yunsiap notes that the girls have become more courageous than they were at first. Not even thinking about the potential consequences. Yunsiap believes they should head home however, Hyun feels compassion for the assistant, suggesting it would be better for them to return with their stomachs full, 
especially because they are already there. Yunxiap is taken aback, considering that the Haiyan he once knew would have created a significant uproar over such a situation. He watches as Haiyan asks about the girl's culinary preferences and reflects on how he initially thought Haiyan was angry when he moved to the countryside for healing. Although this, Haiyan has transformed and now even has a pet dog. Haiyan finds himself in the kitchen, thinking about what the girls might like, as he really wants to make something tasty for them. He grabs the ingredients he has and decides to whip up a light meal eh, although he wants it to be filling. While he carefully prepares the dish, he thinks about how important it is to create something that is both fun to eat and packed with nutrients and flavor. When he serves the meal, he mentions that he has made tomato pasta and steak salad. The girls look impressed and start to dig into the food right away. As they enjoy each bite, they share their compliments through different comments, which makes Haiyan tell Yunxiap to let them eat in peace, pointing out that he specifically made a light meal. However, Yunxiap replies that he didn't mean to interrupt their fun. They both watch as the girls excitedly rave about how great the meal is, causing Haiyan to ask Yunxiap if he had been ignoring their meals before this. Haiyan tells Yunxiap that he should eat, because he has made Vongol pasta for him, since he will be driving back to Seoul. Yunxiap wonders if Haiyan is really being nice. He asks if Haiyan is dealing with a serious illness, to which Haiyan replies by asking if he looks sick. The girls, ready to leave after enjoying the meal, keep praising it, while Haiyan promises to make something even better next time they visit. They, in turn say they will come back and sweetly call him Chef Kang Haiyan before getting on their bus. Haiyan is surprised by their recognition and Yunxiap explains that the girls often watch his show when they feel hungry, it would have been stranger if they didn't know who he was. Later, Yunxiap gets into his car to go and Haiyan asks him to let him know ahead of time the next time he wants to visit. Yunxiap then checks on how Haiyan is healing, and he says that it is going quite well. Haiyan rides his bicycle with rice cake to visit a supermarket, he thinks that the store where he bought spring greens before is the closest to him. However, the other supermarkets are located in bigger towns. When he arrives at the supermarket, he hopes to find some spring greens. As he goes inside, he meets a new cashier and wonders if she could be the daughter-in-law of the grandmother he met last time. The lady asks if he is looking for anything special, to which he replies that he will just look around himself. While walking down the aisles, he realizes that they don't have any dalalis, which he needs for a pasta dish for Grandma Park. She tells him that they only have a small amount of spring greens, making him think that he has to go to the town to get what he needs. As he leaves, promising to come back later, he hears some kids fighting. When he turns to see what's going on, he spots a little girl and a boy pulling at each other's hair, arguing that they will never play together again. The boy tells the girl she seems different from the others, suggesting she should go back to her country. This makes the girl very sad however, just before she can say anything, Hein jumps in, saying that once you say something out loud you can't take it back. He asks the boy if he's sure he won't regret what he said later. The little boy just looks at him without saying anything. Meanwhile, the cashier at the supermarket comes out, and it turns out she's the mother of the little girl named Myung. As Myung runs to her mom, the boy quickly leaves and Myung's mom thanks Haiyan for helping. He modestly says he didn't do much, but she keeps thanking him. He then asks how Myung is doing and she says Myung has fallen asleep. She admits it's all because of what she did however, Hein is surprised by this. He points out it was just a small fight between kids and it's not her fault. He also mentions her name is Engen, that she comes from Vietnam and that she worries Ma Young might be bullied because of her. Ma Young tells Kang Haiyang that she thinks Ma Young is being bullied because of her situation. Kang Haiyang feels like he should comfort her, however, he finds it hard to express his feelings after seeing the fight among the kids, thinking it might not be right for him to step in. Ungan knows who Kang Haiyang is, as she found out he runs a restaurant in the village, and she asks if he would teach her how to make Korean food. This request comes up because Ma Young wants to celebrate her birthday with her friends, but she only knows how to cook Vietnamese dishes. Kang Haiyang agrees to help, but he starts to wonder why Ungan asked him for help. While looking at some white rice cakes, he realizes that asking for help when you need it is a good thing. So, he decides to help and starts talking to a trustworthy person who knows a lot about the villagers. Kang Haiyang arrives at Sujin's house, and finds the village chief already there, who quickly confronts him for not asking for help. Kang Haiyang explains that he has been thinking about which dish to teach Ungan for her birthday party. While talking, Kang Haiyang realizes that the village only has one school, with just one combined class. This discovery pushes him to come up with a plan for teaching Ungan a dish that she can easily understand. Sujin feels sorry for Myung, hoping that her child won't go through the same struggles that Myung does. The village chief suggests that Kang Hang teach Ungan how to make a Vietnamese dish. He says that the pressure to fit in can really hurt Myung, especially because she has a hard time accepting their differences. The adults must show that being different is not bad or wrong however, this is where Kang Hang's role is very important. While Kang Hang helps Ungan with the dishes, she thinks about whether the children will like the food. After all, Korean and Vietnamese cuisines are really different. 
This makes her question her choices however, she comforts herself that it will be fine as long as Kang Haing supports her. Ungan presents the final dish, Bien Cha, which is one of Vietnam's signature foods. It is known for having vegetables, meat and noodles that are dipped in Nua Cam sauce. Kang Hong, using rice cakes to distract her, tells Ungan that the food is amazing after asking for a glass of water. He suggests some changes to the dish and encourages him to make it for the party coming up. On his way home, Lai Young gives Kang Haing a birthday invitation, urging him to come, although she is unsure if any of the children will show up, especially because she recently had a fight with Chumin, who is really popular. On the day of the party, Mai Young feels nervous about how many people will come and is fascinated by her mom's traditional dress from her homeland. She asks about getting one for herself and her mom agrees. To her surprise, Mai Young is shocked to see Chelman at the door, this is unexpected. However, she quickly tries to hide her feelings. Although she isn't sure what to say, she feels a mix of excitement and nervousness. Chelman looks a bit different, but it's still him. This moment is important because it could change everything. Chelman says sorry to Mai Young, who nicely forgives him and gives him a birthday invitation. This act makes the other kids, who had been hiding, joyfully come out with their own invitation cards. The excitement among the children is really strong, especially since it's their first time experiencing these tasty dishes. Ingen decides to show the kids the right way to eat bun cha with the sauce whenever they need help. Her children enjoy the yummy bun cha and give enthusiastic compliments, which makes Miju think again about her future husband's love for dumplings. When the kids ask more questions, Myung proudly shows her dress explaining that both the dress and the food come from her mom's country home in Vietnam. This revelation makes Miju recon future husband's clothing choices. Kang Hyung tells Ungan he will take care of the cooking. However, when Mai Young says she wants to show off their matching outfits to her friends, she happily pulls her mom over, and this leads to a chorus of compliments about how beautiful the clothes are. A beastman, a big humanoid cat, tells Mona's mom, who leads the beastman village, about her daughter's many adventures. She tells the beastman to call Kang Hong because Mona feels a responsibility towards him however, as her mom, it's important that she gets to know him. When the beastman says Mona is with Kang Hong, her curiosity grows. In a different place Rice Cake reacts strongly when she sees the shrimp, making Kang Haing wonder why she is so scared of these tiny dead creatures. He thinks it could be because she has never seen them outside the salty water. After he sees Rice Cake a serious request, Kang Haing decides to make a dish with the shrimp. Soon, Mona comes over and Kang Haing offers her some, saying she can eat if she's hungry, which means he is feeding both her and rice cake. Their excitement grows after they try the tasty shrimp and this makes Kang Young feel satisfied. However, just as Mona asks for another serving, the beastman enters and Kang Haing instantly sees him as the person who previously took Mona away. He urgently tells the beastman to let Mona finish her shrimp before whisking her back to the village. But he is shocked when the beastman says that he is there for Kang Hung himself. This is unexpected, because Kang Haing thought the beastman only wanted Mona. Haiyan feels overwhelmed by the villagers, as they all seem to like him and want to talk with him. Minho and his wife rescue him from them, and he sits asking if they celebrate that way when there is a new person. Minho's wife explains that it is a small town so they try to stay together. She says they share good things and congratulate each other. So it is not like they just like to drink. The village head agrees with her and tells Haiyan that sharing is caring and it is good to let people know who he really is. He then points out that Haiyan's restaurant is opening soon and he should take the opportunity to promote it. Haiyan reasons that he should really advertise his restaurant. He looks around at the villagers chatting among themselves and having fun, and he realizes that the party is not bad. Meanwhile, Rice Cake is having fun eating all the meats and escaping the hands of the villagers who try to stop him. He runs around stealing meats and causing havoc. Minho notifies Haiyan, but Haiyan ignores him reasoning that he should have just left rice cake back at the other world. Haiyan notices a young boy sitting alone and looking gloomy. He is surprised that there is a little kid in town, and he wonders if he is gloomy because he does not have a friend to play with. He watches as the boy's grandma brings a snack for him, but the boy throws it away. As the boy runs off, his grandma calls him sang -hoo feeling distraught. The village head approaches her and asks what happened. She explains that sang -hoo has been like that since he came back from school the previous day because his friend was bragging about eating a hamburger. She says she bought one for him, but she does not think it is the same. Haiyan overhears their conversation and reasons that sang -hoo does not want a hamburger from the store. A man asks if he should get a better one on his way back from work the next day. But the village head says they do not sell hamburgers in their area and they only sell it at MCD, a place with a bunch of theme parks. 
As the villagers worry about where they will get the hamburger for Sanghu, the village head says they can make it if it is not sold in their area. He points to Haiyan and says they have a chef from Seoul, and he will probably know a lot about it. Haiyan watches in confusion as the villagers agree with the village head, who then tells Haiyan that he is all they've got to make the hamburger. He grudgingly agrees and the village head says it does not have to taste the same as sang -hoo probably does not want to have a hamburger. He says that sang -hoo is most likely jealous of the fact that his friend's family went out together. He explains that sang -hoo's mother is sick so she lives in a hospital, and his father is outside the country because of his job which makes sang -hoo lonely and sad. As Haiyan reasons that he now understands the situation, the village head tells him that Sanwu is the only kid in their town so they all have to take care of him. Haiyan watches the village head realizing that he seems to know everyone's situation, but the bottles of beer and bottle caps hanging around his body just keep baffling Haiyan. Late at night, Haiyan sits in his restaurant pondering how he will make the hamburger. He says he can easily make a hamburger, and although he has never been to MCD, he still has to do it right. Rice cake brings his plate to show he is hungry, but Haiyan reasons that the villagers had to eat the side dishes only because someone ate their meat. So making a hamburger is the least he can do for them. Rice cake rolls on the ground trying to act cute. But Haiyan says there is no more food for him, but he has to taste some for him. Haiyan prepares a hamburger and places it in front of rice cake. As he watches him eating, he reasons that he made the hamburger by looking at an image. But Rice Cake's tail is not wagging as fast. He remembers that he ate a lot while he was studying, and he went to America with a love for cooking. He feels it seems stupid that he had never been passionate about anything else. He wonders what his previous self will think of him now, and in frustration, he asks Rice Cake if he can eat more. Rice Cake barks happily and Haiyan gets ready to cook reasoning that asking him to go easy on cooking is hard when he has never taken cooking easy before. As Haiyan prepares the hamburger, Minho and his wife settle down with sang -hoo and his grandmother at the restaurant. Minho's wife says it smells really good and Haiyan knows how to cook anything. She asks sang -hoo, who is looking solemn if he is happy to finally get to eat a hamburger. Before he can respond, Haiyan arrives and places a plate of hamburger in front of him. Sangwoo has a taste, and he is so happy as the hamburger is so yummy. He reasons that it is a hundred times better than the convenience store one. And he tells his grandma that she smiles and says she is glad that he is happy. He then feels sad and admits that he actually just wanted to see his mom, and he thought he could go to Seoul where his mom is if he asked for a burger. He then apologizes to her for being rude. She hugs him also feeling sad that sang -hoo has to go through all that. She then apologizes that she did not realize that, as they hug themselves, she says he must have been so sad that he has to live without his parents despite his young age. sang -hoo, who is now crying, says he is okay living with her. He apologizes saying he likes living with her. Haiyan then says he will be going to Seoul soon and sang -hoo can come with him. sang -hoo and his grandma are surprised at his words, and he asks if he can really come along. Hyun says they may even stop by the place Song Hu wanted to go as he had never had a burger from there either. Sang Hu is so happy, and he says he wants to go with Hyun, and Minho's wife tells him to take many pictures to show her when he gets back. Hyun feels he has gone too far, but as Sang Hu and his grandma leave Hyun's restaurant, they thank him with happy faces, and he promises that they will go to Seoul soon. Haiyan goes through the ingredients he has left, and he realizes that there are so many leftover ingredients he wonders if he should go camping with them. He then remembers that he has never actually gone camping before, and he would not have the time to go once the restaurant opens. He notices rice cake staring at him with an irresistible look, and he asks why he is looking at him that way as he never said he was going to the other world. Haiyan tells rice cake that he is not going there, like always. He is unable to resist, and they later go to the other world. As Rice Cake plays around, Haiyan reasons that he has been there more times than he has been to the grocery store. He admits that the view is nice, and he starts connecting his tent. Haiyan has a hard time as he struggles with the tent. While Rice Cake plays around, after finally setting up the tent, 
He sits on the ground to catch his breath and realizes that he is hungry. Hyun prepares a meal with meat, and as he starts eating, two little squirrels come to the side staring at him. He throws some pieces of meat at them, but a huge bird flies down and eats it before the meat gets to the squirrels. After eating, Hyun sits watching the scenery. He reasons that he was worried that he would be bored, but he now realizes that doing nothing can also be satisfying, and that might be what is called healing. He wonders where rice cake went, but he is not worried as he knows he will come back when he is hungry. He decides to set up a bonfire, but unknown to him, there is something or someone watching him from the bush. The unknown being rustles the bush and Hyun, thinking it is rice cake, says he has plenty of meat for him. He turns as the being is about to snatch the food from him, and he quickly shifts. Hyun says it is definitely not rice cake. He stares at the being, who is growling, and realizes that it is a girl. Hyun notices that the being has a tail, and he wonders if it is a cat. He wonders if she is half-human and half-beast like they show in the movies. She lunges for the plate again, but he manages to shift out of her way. He wonders where Rice Cake is when he really needs him, and he tells the girl that they should resolve the issue peacefully. He places the plate on the ground asking if she is hungry. He tells her he will give her the plate of meat so she can just go back. The girl crawls to the bowl of meat and starts picking it with her mouth. She suddenly drops the beef and starts breathing through her mouth. Hyun realizes that the kinchai stew he used is spicy, and that is what is affecting her. He leaves to get her some water, but when he gets back, she has continued eating the meat. As she realizes it is still delicious, rice cake arrives and Hyun goes to serve the remaining meat for him. But Rice Cake sees the girl eating the beef and attacks her. Hyun desperately tries to stop him, but the two attacks each other. After a while of pleading with both of them to stop attacking each other, a huge man with a beastful appearance like the girl arrives. He apologizes to Hyun and takes her away, leaving Hyun bewildered. Hyun is seen cleaning the restaurant and he says that the next day is finally their opening day. He reasons that even though he came there to relax, he might have played around too much, so now that he has decided to open a business, he should prepare thoroughly. An old woman stares at the building while Hyun counts off the preparation he has completed. The woman then enters the restaurant and asks if he is open. He tells her they will open the next day, but he seems unable to turn her down, and he tells her to have a sit. Instead, she looks around and asks him why he is keeping the old table instead of throwing it away. She continues walking around and comments that the place is still the same. He asks her if she was there when it was a tea house, but she asks him what he will be selling. He replies that he will mainly be selling Western food like pasta and pizza, and she tells him to give her some pasta. He asks what type of pasta she would like to have, but she tells him to decide that himself. Hyun moves to the kitchen to prepare the pasta. He reasons that it is probably her first time eating pasta, and since tomato pasta is the most common, she should be able to eat it. As he prepares the pasta and serves it, he reasons that since she is his shop's first customer, he must give her the perfect treatment. He places the pasta on her table and watches from a distance as she takes the first taste. He ponders on the fact that he did not taste the meal, but he had received many compliments on the pasta so there is no way it will not taste good. The woman drops the chopstick without finishing the pasta and asks Hyun how much it is. He is shocked as he stares at her, and the village head arrives at that moment. He sees the woman and calls her Grandma Park, asking what she is doing at the restaurant. As she leaves, she says she obviously came to eat. He points out that the opening is tomorrow, but she leaves saying she has already finished eating. He enters the restaurant to see Hyun looking dejected, as he is worried that she left so much food untouched, and he wonders what the problem is. Hyun sits in a corner feeling bad about Grandma Park not eating his pasta. The village head becomes worried and asks him what is wrong and if the preparations are not going well, and he replies that is not the problem as he will be closing down the restaurant. The village head is shocked as he reasons that Hyun has not even opened the restaurant yet. He then realizes that it is because Grandma Park left a lot of food, 
he points out that it is not like Haiyan won some international cooking competition and he cannot expect to satisfy everyone. He urges Haiyan to shrug it off as it is possible Grandma Park did not come there for the food. He explains that her late husband used to come there often when the place was still a tea house, and he would go there so often that the door threshold wore out, but he passed the previous year. The village head tells Haiyan that Grandma Park spent most of her time alone at home, and it has been a while since he last saw her, so he guesses she still thinks about her husband a lot. He says the dead are dead so the living should live their lives and clinging to the past is nothing but foolish. He then goes back to the issue and tells Haiyan that it is not his fault as Grandma Park is rather picky when it comes to food and considering the situation she is in, he does not have to pay it any mind. Haiyan says there is no way he will not pay mind after hearing all that and it is already giving him a headache so he goes to the other world to relax. As he sits watching rice cake play with the huge rabbit, he reasons if no dangerous animals are lurking around the area because he has them. He feels relieved and says there is no place as good as the other world to sort his thoughts. He remembers Grandma Park and thinks that he was shocked to see her leave so much pasta on the plate. But he feels sorry for her now that he has heard her story, as he asks himself if he should prepare some Korean food for her next time. He looks up to the tree and sees the girl lying on a branch. He is surprised to see her, but he ignores her and prepares a meal as Rice Cake is hungry. The girl sits close to him as he prepares the meal. He remembers how she stopped eating the first time due to the pepper, and he decides to skip the pepperoncini. He melts butter in a pan, adds mushrooms, and sprinkles in a bit of pepper and salt. As the cream thickens, he adds in the parmesan cheese and puts in the cooked pasta. He tops it with steak and places the meal in front of the girl. She growls at him, but he only warns her to eat up before it gets stolen. The girl seems to hesitate as she remembers how spicy it was at the first time. She bits into the steak and she is surprised at how delicious it is. She digs into the meal and Haiyan who has been watching her says she may not be articulated into words, but he can see that she liked it. Haiyan sits to eat his own plate reasoning that he does not really like the pasta as the cream and steak are both greasy and heavy and that combination does not work for him, as it is more of a fusion pasta than a traditional one. The girl starts rubbing on him and he points out that she attacked him the last time they met but she is now acting all cute. He says it seems the pasta was really good and he reasons that it does not really matter if it's fusion or traditional pasta as long as it suits the palate of whoever is eating it. He feels enlightened that it just has to taste good to the person eating it, and the girl watches him in confusion. Back at his restaurant, Haiyan is preparing some vegetables and he serves them to rice cake, who completely ignores him and the vegetables. He reasons that he has to do without him this time. He reassures himself that it will not be difficult for him, as the taste of all the ingredients is ingrained in his memory, and he cannot rely on rice cake forever. Meanwhile, he had placed a notice at the restaurant door saying the restaurant would be opened next week due to personal reasons. Haiyan feels a chef who failed to satisfy his first guest does not deserve to open his restaurant and get to work. The village head goes to visit Grandma Park who is sitting in her house. He says he thinks she has finally come out of the house, but yet, she still chooses to sit there. He tells her to come out as there are so many fun things outside her house, but she only asks him what brings him to her place, and he asks if he cannot stop by his neighbor's place. He then goes on to say Haiyan was in quite a shock after she left the plate of pasta, and she says the dish did not suit her taste, and that should not have shocked him. The village head then suggests that since she does not have anything else to do, she should visit Haiyan a second time. Grandma Park asks him why she would do something so bothersome, and he replies that it could be different this time around. As he hesitates, he asks if it is that difficult for her to walk out of the gates. He urges her to give Haiyan another chance and it could be worth the effort and he leaves. Meanwhile, Haiyan is done cooking. He stares at the plate of pasta and says focusing on one main vegetable while making the dish was indeed a better choice, and since he balanced it out with some seafood, the two different tastes should work well. 
He reasons that the problem now is he does not know how to invite Grandma Park. And the doorbell rings. He steps out to check who it is, and he meets Grandma Park who asks him if he is open.